really interesting fight at 185 pounds is we have your boy Eric Anders, the guy that's main event at a spot in the hometown twice. of his opponent in one instance, but his main event twice, taking on Brazil's Antonio Hoyo. And Matt, with Antonio Hoyo, we've seen him twice. He did the old Ole on Dana White's Contender Series. Picked up a win, then picked up another win, gets the contract, takes on a former Contender Series alum in Andrea Muniz. And loses emphatically. He lost that fight by decision, but it definitely wasn't a good performance. And for Antonio Hoyo, this was always the talking point. And maybe you don't know him, so here it is. They compare him to Tiago Santos. He's a guy that they bring in to a lot of different camps to replicate Tiago Santos with his size and his length at 185 pounds. Phenomenal He's got game. Yikes. He's got good striking. He's a dynamic guy on the feet. Plenty of finish wins. 9-3 and three overall record. He's taking on a wrestler in Eric Anders. And I went back and I got called out on Twitter. And the person that called me out was 100% right. We went back and watched some Eric Anders tape for this one. And specifically watched the fight against Lyoto Machida. Are you finally going to admit this? With Eric Anders, he took on a striker in Lyoto Machida. It was a really close fight. I've held on to the fact that Eric Anders beat Lyoto Machida in that fight. Well, since it happened, I mean Machida won that fight. Thank you. Machida won that I've fight. waited so years for this guy. You she look at this understand. one, and Eric Anders, I mean, at a certain point, had a spectacular, pristine record. He was undefeated. He was 10-0 going into the Machida fight. He loses split decision. He beats Tim Williams in a fight where we saw that kick replicated last week when Derek Anderson fought Killy Smoda over with Bellator at 251, where they used it the replay to see if it was a legal kick. Eric Anders in his fight against Tim Williams, similar thing where Williams was pushing up, Anders lands a kick that's almost a soccer kick. It's like millimeters away from being a soccer kick, but it wasn't. Then he loses to Thiago Santos. He loses a split decision to Elias Theodoru. He loses to Khalil Roundtree. K1 Khalil. At K1 Khalil. He beats Venetius Mojea. Not that great. And then he beats Gerald Mearshart Terrible by split fight. decision. And then he loses to Christoph Jocko. A... Striker and Jocko, Striker and Roundtree when he's Bangkok ready, Clue Roundtree, Striker and Elias Theodoro, Striker and Tiago Santos, Striker and Leota Machida. If you notice the theme here, oh. Eric Anders struggles against volume heavy and also powerful strikers too. I agree with strikers. all of that. If you really want to see two guys just throw single shots until one of them lands, this is the fight for you. Because Eric Anders is not really a volume heavy guy, but you know, and yes, they're going to bring it up. Did you know Eric Anders actually knows? Roll Tide! Thank you. Did you know he knows? I can't even think of the Nick Saban? Goodness, that was bad. He did play at... Uh, Alabama. Alabama, goodness. I don't pay attention to football. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Won a national championship. Don't know if you've heard. So, and they're going to bring it up in every promo, but you really have to forget about that. He's an MMA fighter now. He's more of an MMA fighter than he was a football player at this point, because at least he's pro now in MMA. I like the upside of Eric Anders at his best. I really do. You look at him on the ground, and people don't really mention this enough. Eric Anders is a really good grappler, competes in jiu-jitsu tournaments all the time, and I think that's an important fact, because we see this a lot. I hate, goodness, I hate Tiago Santos in these videos, it sounds. Tiago Santos is a good example, though. He has a black belt, and I can put that in quotations, because you know who else has a black belt? Damian Maya, Brian Ortega. You know, guys who are phenomenal on the ground, who never have issues in the grappling department. Tiago Santos is a black belt, and he doesn't really move on the ground. Eric Anders, I think he might only be listed as either having a purple or a brown belt, but you actually look and he's competing in tournaments constantly under his own weight class and open weight and different uh, levels of tournaments. So I think having a brown belt in which you actually compete under is much more important than just having a black belt. So if you hear Eric Anders not having that black belt in jiu-jitsu, don't be worried. He's actually got a really well-rounded ground game. The wrestling for him has always been kind of one of those weird areas, and you can tell that he's such a big, strong, physical guy that he monitors his cardio almost a little bit too much because he never wants to overexert himself really going for that finish unless he knows he's about to get it because he's been known to gas out in some fights. The Tim Williams fight is a good one to bring up because he was this massive favorite going into the Tim Williams fight, and then it just seemed like Tim Williams would just never go away, would never go away, would never go away. And as the fight progressed, not that you thought Tim Williams was going to finish Eric Anders by any means, but as the fight was going on, you're like, okay, Eric Anders is starting to slow down. Tim Williams is starting to, you know, speed up. Like, this is looking bad. And then, of course, Anders knocks him out with that really highlight reel knockout. We all forget about what happened up until that point, though. Antonio Hoya, I mean, like you had said, he's a budget Tiago Santos if you were looking for him at Kirkland. He does a lot of the things Santos does well. The one issue I have with Arroyo, though, is that... He doesn't have those follow-up shots. He is just a strictly single-shot guy. Whereas Santos, he'll throw some combinations and kind of wait. Ahoyo just throws that one big shot. And then he'll kind of like wait and admire his work for a second. Move and do it again. Now, 
when he does recharge and throw that one shot, you better move out of the way because he is absolutely massive for this weight division. Eric Anders, though, he's fought guys who can do that. And I do like what you had said. Eric Anders struggles against striker, and Antonio Hoyo definitely is a striker, but he's not a volume striker like the Machidas or the Theodoros or any of those other guys that Anders had trouble with. He's more of that single shot guy. And if you're just going single shot with Eric Anders, I don't think it's a fight he's going to lose. This is a trouble for me with Antonio Hoyo. I look at his record, and sometimes we focus on this a little bit too much. Sometimes we don't focus on it enough. Antonio Hoyo makes his debut against a guy that's 0-1. Then he fights an 0-0, that's fair. Fights a guy that's 4-5, and that's good. Then he loses to Bredson Hibero, who's 3-0. It's going to happen. Then he beats a guy that's 0-0. Then he loses to a guy that's 2-0. He fights a guy that's 11-2. I dare you to look up Trevor Carlson on Topology. He was taking some of that Mike's special sauce, and he it's a bit of a salty 11-2. and So he wins that fight. Then he gets matched up against a guy that's 2-4, and then 1-1. and then 8-3, and three, that's on Contender Series, so it counts. That's a good win. And then he beats Steven Regman, who is 9-3. All right, decent win. Then he loses to a submission specialist in Andrea Muniz. Then I look at the fights that have fallen through for Antonio Hoyo. Alessio DiCirico, DiCirico withdraws. Kevin Holland, Holland gets hurt, can't make it. Then you had Antonio Hoyo was supposed to take on Trevin Giles earlier this year. Antonio Hoyo out. Tapology is listed as issues you know after the weight cut so i don't really love that especially going into a fight with eric anders he was originally supposed to take on andreas michaelidis that fight fell through in steps anders as far as ahoyo getting ready for this fight against anders michaelidis pretty good grappler pretty good striking so ahoyo has already got the meat and potatoes of camp ready for a guy like michaelidis to switch it into a different gear and take on eric anders Eric Anders is a tougher test than Andreas Mihailidis. I have to say that right now. I mean, Mihailidis, his last fight against Modestus Bukowskis, a lot of people were high on him. And just, he was up a lot. He was, that's, that means a lot coming from Craig. I would say we're down on Eric Anders more than the average fan. And for him to admit that, that's a big stepping stone. There's a lot of stuff in here that are like, th that's a first. But for Andreas Mihailidis going into his fight with Bukowskis, a lot of people were excited about him and what he had done at 85. This would have been the opportunity to see 100% Mikhailidis. So for Greek MMA fans, hopefully get your guy back. But for this fight, Antonio Hoyo and Eric Anders. I look at the odds. Anders open to minus 170. A lot of people are going with a Hoyo to the tune of the fact that Anders now minus 147. For Antonio Hoyo, open plus 145. He's now plus 122 underdog. The votes over on Tapology have 417 total votes. 80% have Anders. 61% by decision. There's people that are going with Ahoyo, and they're out there. And if you're one of those people, let us know down below in the comments because typically the people that are going with the underdog or the downtrodden are the most vocal in the comments, and we respect we that, do. and we appreciate that. And Anders does struggle with those strikers. I just don't see this being that type of fight. I agree with a lot of what you said, but I will have kind of the one path to victory for Ahoyo if you do think he's going to win. The leg kicks. We saw Khalil Roundtree coming back from Thailand, and he just became Bruce Lee overnight, and he absolutely destroyed the front leg of Eric Anders to the point where it really opened up a lot of his other striking. I don't think Ahoyo has that speed that Roundtree had in that one fight. It's really a bit of an outlier for Khalil, but either way... If he is able to use those low calf kicks in a similar way, I don't see Anders being able to just check those overnight. I know he's had a little bit of time since that fight, but that was such a big issue that I do think it'll take a few fights for him to really get down his defense with those techniques. So I think that could be a really nice move and a really nice technique for Hoyo as the fight progresses. But I really have to go with the overall game of Eric Anders or just the leg kicks of Hoyo. And if I can focus a little bit more, because I don't think I did enough on Eric Anders, I look at some of the wins. Brendan Allen beats him in LFA, becomes a middleweight champ. Then he beats Rafael Natal, so you beat a, a decent grappler. You beat Marcus Perez and you take his O. That's a decent win. And a guy that's not similar to Hoyo, but Marcus Perez, he hits hard. He throws more single shots than anything. Cue up Drikas Duplessy. Then he loses to Machida, it's going to happen, and so on and so forth. So for Eric Anders, it's that strength of schedule. You might not have beaten some of those guys. The Santos fight up at, you know, a main event slot where, yeah, that was a tough look. But still, I have Anders in this one. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good one. And if Antonio Ojo 
really connects on a power shot. There's definitely a path to victory for both yeah. of these guys. So I'm really looking forward to it. We both have Eric Anders to get the win, bringing it back to Alabama, SBG Alabama to be specific. And it's a great card. It's a really interesting card. A lot of under the radar fights that maybe a lot of people aren't getting up for in the morning, but hey, I'm drinking my morning coffee, I'm eating my toast, and I'm hanging out with Fight Night Picks Matt. And as we always say, keep it locked in with the channel. We'll have some more stuff popping off this week. So keep it locked in, as we always do say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.